Ashes of Creation is an ongoing project since 2017 from Intrepid Studios. I had the chance to play the Alpha 1 testing period and I share all the good I could find on my last video. This time, however, we dive deep, get our hands dirty and light up the dark side of AOC. Before we jump into the rabbit hole, I want to remind everyone that AOC is still early in development. Intrepid stated that the intention of Alpha 1 was to test the clients, launchers and servers performance and nothing more. I'm going to present you with all my findings from Alpha 1 and then give my overall opinion. Right off the bat, a new player has to overcome some obstacles before entering the game. A new player to buy the Alpha 1 package had to create an account on the AOC website, then another one to the forms to download the client. On top of that, there was a strange common issue that for some reason you couldn't log into the forums. That prevented players from downloading the client and access the game. I spent more than an hour just trying to solve this. On the bright side, intrepid stuff were always online on Discord, giving advice and solving issues on the fly. In my case, Margaret immediately jumped in and tried her best to help me. Now in the game, the first thing that rose some eyebrows was the character creation. There were available only 4 out of 9 races, 3 out of 8 archetypes, a male-female option and 3 different hair and bird styles. That's all. And your first steps in Vera could be a bit confusing. The game did a poor job guiding the new players at the beginning of their adventure. Any game, even if it's a sandbox, should guide the new players on their first steps and teach them what and where to look for. The main map and the minimap were way below average for me, and they can be a bit confusing for a new player. First, the main map provides way too little information. The only thing you can find is the location of the nodes and the dungeons, whereas the minimap provides way too much information. You can change the zoom level, move it, rotate it, or edit it in any way. The first hour in the game, especially in a sandbox game, has to be a welcoming, silky smooth experience for the player and not a barrier to overcome. As we continue our journey going down the rabbit hole, the next obstacle we find are the quest lines. Intrepid promised meaningful and high quality quest lines, but instead, we got some rust, messy, hairy, chaotic, time wasting, unengaging quest lines. Very early in the game, to complete a quest objective, you need to pack up your stuff, book an airplane ticket, travel across the world, only to find that you need to go all the way back to complete the quest. I can understand how anyone thought that was a good idea for a level 3 player to have to travel by foot for 10 to 20 minutes into empty areas with nothing but higher level mobs just to do some meaningless quest objectives and then to go all the way back. I found quests with wrong NPC names, sending you to wrong locations, awfully misplayed NPCs and to be poorly designed overall. In my opinion, AUC's questing was easily the worst experience I ever had. To be fair, there were a handful of exceptions. There were some decent quests, but only a handful. Overall, I found the questing to be dreadful. And unfortunately, our troubles doesn't stop here. Let's dive deeper to find our next problem. I have only three words to say about this segment. Oh my god. So far, we faced poorly designed content, but now we are against some game breaking situations. It's like AOC Challenge Cyberpunk 2077 for the Buggy Game of the Year award. Both games tried hard. It was a rough, 
unpredicted battle, but in the end, we had a winner. Intrepid created the Alpha 1 as a progress showcase, including only limited and unselected content for this testing period. It's understandable why a company will decide to show off only their best assets. However, even with this limited content, the game was a buggy mess. We we'll talk about the problematic questing system, but now I want to add another layer to the issue. We had only a small number of quests available, and many of them were bugged in any imaginable way possible, preventing players from completing them. In AOC, the best way to level up is by completing quests, so having a big portion of the available quests bugged was a big issue. All the players that wanted to get to the max level had to get the last 3 or even 5 levels by grinding mobs because all the remaining available quests were bugged. And let me say this, grinding mobs in Alpha 1 wasn't a pleasant experience. To me, the NPC population and placement was rust with no plan in mind. It's like the mobs randomly fell off the sky, like the players that randomly fell off the map all the time. This problem was very common, but players fear not because Intrepid has the solution. In case you fall off the map, just press Ctrl T to reset your character's position. If that doesn't work, then press it 5 times. Easy! Good job. Also, I found a whole area that mobs were instantly respawned and some types of mobs that never lose aggro and they keep running after you forever like a pet. But this pet is trying to kill you. <laughs> but mobs wasn't the only place to find bugs. There were bugs in the UI, keeping you the tooltips on the screen after you close the windows. Bugs prevented you from dismount, if the mount had even slightly touched the water. Bugs in the NPCs, bugs in the skills, bugs in the water, bugs in the raid bosses, bugs in the gathering system, bugs in the longing server, bugs in the node systems, bugs, bugs, bugs. The bugs have conquered World of Vera and they're everywhere. We are now deep inside the rabbit hole, and now the things are getting ugly, nasty, and I'm not going to hold back. Intrepid, back in 2017, promised the first alpha test to take place in Q4 2017 and the first alpha 1 release in 2018. Intrepid received almost $3.3 million from 20,000 backers from the Kickstarter campaign. In the following months, Steven repeatedly claimed that the Alpha 1 release will be indeed happen in 2018 and the full release of the game will happen for sure before 2020. With these two promises, Steven sold hundreds of thousands of pre-order packages and thousands of monthly cosmetic skins. Fast forward to the present and the release of Alpha 1 happens in the summer of 2021. There is no available roadmap or even a hint about the Alpha 2 release or when the project will be completed. We all want the game to be good, and if it has to be delayed, so be it. However, there are some issues. The Alpha 1 had only 4 out of 9 races, and 3 out of 8 archetypes. Don't forget that every archetype will have around 10 unique skills, so Intrepid needs to create at least 50 more skill animations. And then, every race comes with a few unique skills, different armor styles, different furniture, and different building skins. Only for the remaining archetypes and races, Intrepid has a ton of work to do. But that's the tip of the iceberg. So far, we've missed all the weapon skills. AOC will have 18 different weapons, and each one will have around 10 unique skills. So, Intrepid needs to create an addition 108 unique skills. But that's nothing in front of the Augment System challenge. Intrepid needs to create a system that the player have the ability to modify their skills in many different ways. I've made a whole video only about the Augment System. Have a look if you want to know more. But the list is going on. The Caravan System is another example that wasn't available during the Alpha 1 and it will be a very challenging system to make. And still, we are not done. Intrepid needs to create a complex, sophisticated artisan system, 
and make all the naval content. Lastly, during Alpha 1, we had available only the 70% of the map and probably less than 50 quests. They need to create the rest 83% of the map and at least 500 more quests. That's an insane amount of things to do. This list would be a living hell for any AAA studio. Intrepid still going up, still hiring new stuff, and so far they have a bad record with delivering their promises. We see the end of the rabbit hole, but we are not there yet. We have two more stops to go. We discussed all the missing content, but what about the content that was available in Alpha 1? Well, Intrepid has a lot of things to do, as there is an overwhelming number of misplaced objects in the map. You see many trees, plants, NPCs, rocks, mobs, and any kind of objects flying or being misplaced. And what about the combat and the dungeons and the raid bosses? Let me answer my question. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I will start with the combat. Combat in Alpha 1 for me was bad. Let me explain. In vanilla or classic WoW, when a skill goes off, then BAM! You feel the impact. You feel that the button you pressed did something. The combat was smooth, responsive and easy to follow. In Alpha 1, I played as a tank, but I couldn't feel the impact and overall, it seems messy. A few days ago, Intrepid gave the choice to the players to choose between rooted or unrooted skill animations. To me, there is no questions. No MMORPG should lock your own animations. And I want to say this to Intrepid. When the players were complaining about the combat being too floated during the epoch, they didn't mean lock us in the animations. AOC used a dodge role as well, but right now it's out of place. If Intrepid wants to keep it, I think they should take a look of how Guild Wars 2 implemented the dodge role system. The combat has to be good, there is no other way around this. Two things can kill the game, and one of these is combat. Simply as that. Next, we have the dungeons. In Alpha 1, we had only open world dungeons with a simple layout. They are similar to Black Desert Online dungeons, and those places to me are more like grinding areas. They don't have any mechanics or anything else special. You can even use your mount and go straight to the boss if you like. Also, the dungeon bosses are just the same mob with more health points. That's not good content. The Alpha 1 had a few raid bosses that visually look pretty good, but the mechanics are not so well thought to say at least. No communication, no coordination is needed, all you need to do is to avoid AoE damage. To understand how bad those mechanics were, take a look at this video. That player soloed a raid boss with no problem, no hacking, no cheating, he just killed the raid boss all by himself. We are almost out of the rabbit hole. This is our last stop, and probably the most important one. I said that two things can kill AOC. One is combat, the other one is the node system. I've made a whole video explaining the node system using 3D graphical designs, so if you are interested, please check it out. The node system is the heart of AOC, is the system that will manipulate or unlock other systems and factions. Dungeons, raid, ward bosses, the caravan system, node wars and other aspects of PvP, shipyards and naval content all are directly controlled by the node system. And guess what? During the Alpha 1, the node system was extremely limited and bugged. The node system needs to be running like a Swiss watch. There is no excuses or second chances on that. I can't stress enough how important it is. But, except for the technical issues, I have some more concerns. In Alpha 1, the nodes are like big spawnable objects 
with the base that sits on the ground. This is the easy way to do it, but it creates problems. You need flat open area, big enough to contain your node at its largest form, which is the village sage right now. In my previous video, I mentioned how well the world of Vera is with crazy elevations. And when you suddenly come across a big flat round area with some textures around that, that don't match the location, then you know that something isn't right. In this testing, we had only 9 available nodes that could level up to rank 3. On release, we'll have 180 nodes, including the castle nodes, that can level up to rank 6. A metropolis would be massive. So imagine this, 118 locations on the map to be open areas, big and flat enough to contain a metropolis, just in case. I really don't want to see that happening. They will be a disaster. Right now, the node looks generic, and all of them were in the middle of nowhere, so they can fit if and when they spawn. Every village, town, city, metropolis must be unique and must be in harmony with the surroundings and the environment. It has to look like a human-made city and not like it fell from the sky like a giant box. Anyone who has played World of Warcraft, even for a few days, will immediately recognize the Stormwing's unique soundtrack or the unique looking Iron Forge. You can't forget those things and that's a huge design success for the WoW devs. We need those bones. Imagine if the horde could burn to the ground the Stormwind. The motivation to join the battle to defend it would be out of charge. Almost the whole server would be online for such a battle. But if it's just a generic looking city, a huge box that fell from the sky, the motivation wouldn't be so high. Please, Intrepid, if you can deliver 118 unique nodes, and probably you can't, please drastically reduce the number of nodes and increase the zone of influence. Make the starting areas nodes, and every node should provide quests that can be completed inside this zone of influence. The nodes must be feel like home for the players, there is no other way around. We finally made it to the other side. If you have watched my previous video, now you know all the good and all the bad about Alpha 1. This testing period to me rose many glowing and blinking red flags. The project was promised to be released before 2020, but almost two years later, and we are still missing more than 80% of the content. The content that we have in our hands was full of bugs and seemed awfully rushed. We have had testing periods since 2018, with thousands of players. Intrepid told us that they created the APOC to test all the technical stuff and their infrastructure. For this reason, APOC went on Steam as a free-to-play and had almost 90,000 registered accounts, with 16,000 active users daily and 3 to 4 concurrent players. Then we had the Alpha One preview with four testing periods over seven months. But, five years of development and all these testing periods weren't enough and we are still testing the technical stuff. Elder Scrolls Online was released after seven years in development, Guild Wars 2 in six, World of Warcraft in four years, and Final Fantasy XIV took five years for the first version. And then, in only three years, they created a whole new game. All of us want the AOC when it releases to be a great game, to be the best MMORPG. If the game releases in the next two years, then everyone will be happy and no one will remember the buggy Alpha 1, assuming that the live version will be good, of course. But what if the project releases in 2027? Will be the player base be happy? Where is the line? I think Intrepid is running out of time. The fans have been extremely supportive so far, but for how long? I love the project, and I will continue following, but I want to ask you to be very mindful before you buy any pre-order packages. Right now, there are thousands of pre-order packages that they are already 5 years old. Please, keep that in mind. This video was very long, 
And if you made it so far, I want to thank you for staying with me. You guys are the only reason I create content, to inform you and have an open discussion about games. I would like to know what do you think about DLC? And I'm interested to know where do you draw the line for the release day? Let me know in the comments below or free to text me on Discord. But for now, that's all for me today. Take care and have a good one. See you again soon. Bye everybody.